got here? Oh, it's a beer from the Milwaukee. It has blue ribbon, established in 1844. Uh, state of Wisconsin. Go Wisconsin! Uh, established in 1848. Go Badgers! Beer is literally older than the state of Wisconsin. Yeah, spotlight yeah. shines the light on it. Stay in Look at this amazing thing. Look at this amazing thing. A black light shine in the hotel room. Find all the seasons uh, and blood. Bodily fluid. Black light. So this is a black light. Hey, y'all ever hear this uh, Scandinavian black metal stuff? Well, what if I told you that it was born out of not only Bathory from Sweden and uh, Merciful Fate from Denmark, Venom from uh, good old balmy sceptered isle land and fucking Celtic Frost from uh, where they make all the money at, but also Brazil. Oh, I know that you know, but some people at home might not be aware of the old uh, Cogumelo Records centered black thrash grind death primordial weirdness scene that was as much an influence on uh, black metal as all of those more uh, north of the equator type bands. And that's what this episode 110 of Radio Free Innsmouth is going to be about. Starting off with Sarcophago. So we have Wagner Lemunier writing most of the music. He's the uh, gentleman on the cover with the uh, bullet belt and the spikes and the corpse paint and the mohawk. Important for black metal aesthetics, of course, but also musically, because we have these eerie tremolo riffs, and one of the uh, first documented uses of the blast beat in a metal context. Originally, that type of drum beat done there by a DD Crazy came out of a uh, hardcore, specifically a lot of the old Scandinavian hardcore bands and Finnish ones like Tervit Kadet from uh, Finland and A Social from Sweden. So my man Wagner was very influenced by those bands, and after his uh, acrimonious split with another notable band from Brazil that starts with an S and rhymes with Zepultura. Well, Look, not all the jokes can land, all right? I'm trying my best here, but anyways, he used to be in Sepultura. He left under uh, very heated circumstances, and they uh, they still all hate each other today. But he took all these like Scandinavian and Finnish punk influences into his idea of what very evil metal should be, which was different from the more thrashy, death metal-y stuff that Sepultura was doing. Took those techniques and kind of made one of the first modern black metal records out of it with a INRI, which of course stands for uh, Jesus Nazarenos Rex Judeorum, Jesus Christ, the King of the Jews. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, Derp, whatever. Logos. Logos. <laughs> Big on Satan, big on evil, big on being spooky with the nails and the bullet belts and the tremolo riffs, the very dark sound and whatnot. Fenris from Darthorn actually talks about this album a lot. He said it was very interesting to the Norwegian guys because they couldn't quite figure out whatever headspace he had to be in to write that kind of stuff, but it influenced them heavily on an aesthetic level. Whereas uh, the Finnish black metal bands like Impaled Nazarene... Well, they're obviously heavily influenced by that stuff. Beherit and Impaled Nazarene, and also uh, Blasphemy from Canada. We're all very big on Sepultura and Sarcophago, but especially Sarcophago. They take that sound, they work in a little bit more uh, melancholic melody to it, and you get sort of that Finnish style of war metal, or if you take all of the melody out and make it even more chaotic, you get the Canadian style of war black metal. But uh, Sarcophago didn't really stick around in there that long by the time of their third album. They still have that very mechanized, almost vaguely fascistic way of uh, playing drums, but the riffs are more Americanized, heavily influenced by death as well, a lot of the uh, technical thrash metal bands. For Sarcophago, that worked. For a lot of the other bands, basically every other band from this scene besides Sepultura, by the time you get to their second and third albums, they're heavily Bay Area thrashed influence or else going into straight up like Machine Head stuff and it's just not as interesting anymore. But that's okay because we have a whole shitload of amazing debut albums from like Dorsal Atlantica, Mutilator, Shockall, Sex Trash, The Mist, Impure. That's a lot of names! Don't worry, we're not gonna do all of them. That would take forever. Instead, 
as sort of a foundational text. We're not going to cover Sepultura this week. That would be like a multi-part episode. But we will cover other bands that were on Cogumelo Records. Specifically, we're looking at the Warfare Noise split that came out in the mid-80s. It features four bands, Shakal, Holocausto, Mutilator, and Sarcophago of course, who we've already covered. Now, Shockall's some pretty interesting shit. Them and Mutilator are somewhat similar in that they are very uh, complexly structured kind of death thrash. Shockall tends more towards sort of like an epic thrash metal thing, whereas uh, Mutilator is quite a bit more grimy and dirty. But out of both of those bands, my favorite is actually The Mist. <laughs> well, see, the reason I'm picking The Mist is because... They share a vocalist with Shockall, and I think he uh, did some of his best work in this particular band. The vocals here are very unique, might be hard for some people to get into, but I like them. And the riffs obviously speak to me, like this dank fucking thrash break. Absolute dark atmosphere, this is from like 1990. We're getting fucking abducted by these sound effects. This song's called Flying Saucers in the Sky. Another interesting note about this album. The album cover is actually from part of a triptych called Blood Chilling Terrors of a Horror in the Macabre by Michael Whelan. Man, these are good riffs. That particular cover started out as something that was split up into a bunch of H.P. Lovecraft book covers back in the uh, 70s. But then three different bands pulled from it to make their album covers. We had like Obituary with Cause of Death, The Mist with Phantasmagoria, and a Demolition Hammer with Epidemic of Violence all di- took different parts of that. And even more interestingly, the uh, part that Obituary took to make their album cover was actually going to be the cover of Sepultura's third album, Arise, but uh, they ended up being convinced to use uh, Nightmare in Red also by Michael Whelan instead. But then Michael Whelan, you know, did him a solid and painted their next two album covers as original works. This is Holocausto. They are so fast and chaotic with their black and thrash that it also kind of helped invent grindcore. I know that Napalm Death were fans, which is kind of funny because of all the uh, Nazi aesthetics on this. They probably aren't too proud of that nowadays. Napalm Death, I mean. These guys probably didn't care because they were just doing it for shock value in all likelihood, kind of like how Sepultura there's pictures of them with swastikas and stall hymns when they were little kids. That was very influential stuff. Later, uh, Brazilian bands like Evil and uh, Goat Penis might have taken the Nazi thing a little bit more seriously. But Holocausto were mostly about just being very fast and evil. Like, that was half of a fucking song you just heard. So very important for grindcore and for black metal. Uh, Nuclear Holocausto Vengeance, the uh, main guy behind Beherit, actually took his name from this band, Holocausto. So that's well worth checking out. I think it got reissued by Relapse, but all of the stuff that I'm using for this episode is from the more recent Grey Haze reissues, so I think either bought the rights to these albums or just the distribution rights from uh, Kogumelo Records, who are still around. But the uh, the main band I wanted to talk about this time was Sex Trash. Oh my, how lewd. <laughs> this one came out towards the tail end of everything in like 1992. And it has Dee Dee Crazy from uh, Sarcophago on drums with some other guys that were kind of in and out of Sarcophago. And it is very atmospheric at times, but most of all, it's overwhelmingly dark and nasty sounding. With a lot of variety. This is like black metal, grindcore, thrash, and death all mixed up before the genres are really clearly uh, differentiated, because these guys didn't give a shit. Somewhat comparable to uh, Impetigo from uh, Illinois in that way. It's messy and sounds sloppy, but it's actually well played. It, the chaos is controlled and then allowed to let loose. This album has little bits of stuff that were pretty much new innovations for Sex Trash at the time, and then show up in later bands. It almost like has the seeds of multiple genres in it. For example, the song Black Church sounds a lot like quite a bit of a Scandinavian black metal, specifically of the Marduk variety. But years before Marduk sounded like this, also has 
bits of what would become the very long, droning tremolo riffs on uh, Dark Throne's Transylvanian Hunger album. I'd say the uh, sex trash influence on riffs like this is perhaps understated by the metal community. Nearly identical styles if you play them back to back. But then they also had weird bits of like technicality. Yeah, I love these ambient tremolo riffs. This nasty weird cycling drums, the dick this part. It's like bizarre jumbled up bar chord mess. I love that. And you can hear a considerably cleaner version in uh, Carcass. Right there, baby. Early Carcass, the more chaotic stuff, also had a pretty obvious uh, influence from a lot of the South American bands, even moving outside of Brazil to look at stuff like Parabellum. In fact, like Chilean stuff, like uh, Parabellum and like Typhon. Or was Typhon Bolivian? I can't even remember. We're, this episode's already going long enough without leaving fucking Brazil. This one's called Alcoholic Mosh, and it shows them incorporating some uh, U.S. thrash metal influences, but not in a boring way. This is actually very good. It sounds like a much more violent and evil take on uh, S.O.D. Oh, this is good chugs. And they say Mosh in the song. Look at this, this is straight up S.O.D. Mosh over a fucking blast beat. You gotta love that. So I think that's a decent primer on uh, some of them Brazilian, like, black thrash grind, speed, crossover, whatever the fuck you call that genre. There, it was all still a mess back then, and these guys all contributed to uh, metal as we know it nowadays. And apart from, like, Sepultura and maybe Sarcophago, if you're a little bit more deeply underground, they don't quite get their due. Hopefully this will rectify that a little bit. And uh, I'll see you guys around. Fungi, 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 f